My name is Natalia Rybczynski. I'm a paleobiologist at the Canadian Museum of Nature. And we're standing here on Deception Island in Antarctica. So this expedition is a really great opportunity for the students. And it's a really interesting collaboration between the Canadian Museum of Nature and also Carleton University. Um, this really shows how we can bring these different areas of knowledge together. We can integrate them. Um, we have expertise at the museum that really complements well what the students learn in university. And I think this is really um, a great partnership and I'm really excited to see how it's gonna proceed moving forward. So the polar regions today, these are really extreme areas in terms of seasonality and climate. These are areas where you have ice, um, you have very sort of simplified ecosystems in general. But what's really interesting is when you look in the past, things were very different. The poles were forested areas. You had alligators living in the Arctic 50 million years ago and sloths living in Antarctica. And so the really extreme climate change and ecosystem change that we see in the fossil record actually provides important clues for what we should expect for the future. Here we are on Seymour Island and we are exploring the sediments, the depositions surrounding the KT boundary and in fact also the KT boundary layer itself is probably within this unit of rocks. Um, we've been finding lots of indication of um, a lot of changing environments. We have different kinds of fossils that we're finding here, some, some sea urchin materials, some fossil wood, um, evidence of, of a shallow marine setting. And so this is all very consistent with what we've been reading in the literature in terms of what we should expect to find here. And, and it's all here and we really weren't sure we were going to find it, but we're pretty happy that we have. This is a good uh, place to be in Antarctica to find these kinds of, of marker beds and fossils um, because there's no vegetation here to cover it. It's all, it's all open for us to see. Um, and we find there's some areas where it might be covered with sediment, but where the wind has come in and cleaned off the surface, we can actually see the layers. And so in that way, this is similar to other places where we've worked before, you know, whether it be in, in desert areas or, or in the high Arctic. Um, so there, there are similarities, there's a familiarity to it, but at the same time, we're, you know, we're in a part of the world that is, uh, is pretty unique. Um, so it's pretty exciting to be here. So what we have evidence here are of the remains of trees. And so we know that there were, there were forests here before. And other sites are, are consistent with that. For example, there are, there are dinosaur remains found in, in similar deposits in different parts of Antarctica. Um, after the, the KT extinction event, um, after the dinosaurs demise, we have a rebuilding of the ecosystem. And so the other parts of the island actually show what the world looked like after the dinosaurs went extinct. And so in those deposits, there's evidence of things like, like poss possums, opossums and sloths, um, and various forms that are unrecognizable today because they're extinct lineages, things that came down from South America. So all that is, is documented on this island. So Seymour Island is, is incredible precious for that. Mm -hmm. 